Hi, I'm Rich Bowen. I'm the community manager of the CentOS project. Leading up to the 15th anniversary of the project in May, I've been talking with some of the people that were around in the early days of the project. A few days ago, I had the great privilege to speak with Greg Kurtzer, who actually founded the project originally back in the early 2000s as part of the Chaos Project. In this interview, he discusses how he came to create the project in the first place. So CentOS came out of another Linux distribution project, which was called Chaos Linux. And Chaos Linux was developed specifically because we wanted to uh, create an RPM-based distribution of Linux that was community-maintained. This came from before joining Berkeley Lab uh, and Department of Energy. Uh, I was really into Debian. I love Debian. I love the community aspect of Debian. It was a harsh community to be part of, for sure. But I, I just, I, I like that it was all community-based. And um, when I joined LBL, first thing that I was told is, yeah, you're not running Debian. We are a Red Hat shop. Red Hat Linux, not even not Enterprise Linux. This was in, um, actually in 2000, October of 2000. All right. And um, we are a Red Hat Linux shop. So uh, everything you do must be must be RPM. And, and whatnot. And I, I, I started getting into RPM at that point and learning RPM. And I just, I, I, I really liked the idea of, of RPM. And so I learned a lot about RPM and started packaging some various, you know, things myself. And, and it became, at some point, I said, you know, we really need a community managed distribution of Linux that was RPM focused. Uh, so I started circulating the, the idea around various IRC groups, around um, local user groups, Linux user groups and whatnot. And a lot of people jumped on the idea and said, this is a fantastic idea. And I said, great. I came up with the idea, but who's going to run it? You guys, you know, I'm not going to run it. I don't know how to do this sort of stuff. You guys go run this. And that was really when people started saying, you know, you, you came up with the idea. You should run it. And that's when I learned that, you know, maybe it's easier to, to create an open source project with a different tone. Yeah, than it is to just join something. So uh, I ended up leading it just because um, nobody else was going to. So I let it. And um, we started building this Linux distribution, and we had some very interesting initial design ten tenants. One of them is it has to be completely self-hosting. We have to create a core operating system that's our base and then have all the extended packages off of that. So we have our core maintainers, and we have our external package maintainers, and we created a really good organization for this. We even called it core. Um, we worked with, um, you know, Seth. Uh, Vidal, who wrote Yum early, early on. We worked with Warren Tagami, who um, Red Hat hired and then and then um, took the name Fedora, used it for what ended up then being a um, an answer to what we were doing, which was Chaos Linux. Yeah. And um, so it was it was you know we 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 had de we definitely had some impact through the community. It was really cool to. Um, you know, to work with all these people and to kind of see all this happening, you know, looking back, it was, it, we didn't know it at the time, but it was, we were, we were kind of developing this, the longer term strategy for how Linux, um, especially RPM based Linux is mm -hmm. to develop moving forward. Um, again, Fedora and then what came out of Chaos EL stands for, stood for Chaos Enterprise Linux, which ended up being CentOS. At some point we were, we were building Chaos and we were using Red Hat as the initial build host. And then we, we moved off of Red Hat eventually and we built on our own core. But before doing that, we were based on, you know, building first initially, building those base RPMs off of Red Hat. And Red Hat went from Red Hat 7, Red Hat Linux 7.3, Red Hat Linux 8, Red Hat Linux 9, no more Red Hat Linux. And at that point, we basically like, well, we don't have a build system anymore if, unless we want to use something that's older. So we said, well, you know, we, we need something to build on. Now, there was this guy named Rocky McGaw. Rocky um, approached me. He worked for a company. They had their own rebuild um, of Red Hat Linux at the time. VA, VA Linux had their own rebuild as well. Yeah. Um, so there were already rebuilds that existed, and he had one of those, and he was maintaining that. And he was also leaving to go create a new company called Team HBC. So he says, well, I've already been doing this. You know, I've been doing this for some time. I can just keep doing it. We can change out the logos and we can just, you know, keep building and whatnot. He said, okay. So he started doing that. At some point, he, he, changed, he changed his company 
and he started going, as I mentioned, to Team HPC. He was building up Team HPC um, with, with a few other founders, and, and they were doing pretty well, but, you know, his time was a little bit, you know, scattered because he just start, started a new company, but he still kept, you know, he still kept with it, and, you know, he was, he was for all practical purposes, he was the first um, technical lead of CentOS. It wasn't even called CentOS at this point. Then there was a slash dot of somebody who created something called White Box Enterprise Linux. Yeah. White Box was a, a fantastic, you know, endeavor to basically say, we're going to take all the source RPMs of Red Hat and we're going to create something new. I did reach out to him after the slash dot and I said, let's work together. We've already been doing this. We see a need to do this. We've been, we haven't released it. You've released it. You have a lot of, you know, uh, support from the community. Can we help you? Can we join your team? We had already, we had our, our entire build infrastructure set up for, for doing builds of an operating system. So we, we're already kind of on this path. We know how to do this. So we said, you know, let's, let's, you know, spin this up real quick. Let's make, let's make sure everything is clean, cleanly built. And then and then rebuild this and then and then create an ISO, you know, spin up an anaconda image and let's let's release this. So we did that. Now initially, it was not it did not get the huge groundswell of of support that White Box did because White Box was first to the scene. Um, but we did get a lot of interest. But we were we were first known basically as a you know a a, a copycat, and um, which we were fine with. Um, but, you know, we're just like, well, we just more of us, you know, we're doing this project, we're already doing something else and we, we have this technology. So let's just, you know, so let's just keep release it and, and support it. And over time, it just kept growing and more and more people started hearing about it. I remember I was in Phoenix at a supercomputing event and supercomputing is the big event for, for high performance computing and scientific compute. And I was sitting at a vendor booth just talking to them. Somebody came up and said, you know, are you guys planning on supporting CentOS? Wow. Um, that was just, that was the first time that I heard somebody else start asking about the project. Now, at about this time, I bring up Rocky again. About this time, Rocky had some um, personal issues going on and um, he ended up taking his own life. Uh, he committed suicide. We found out about it because some girl that we had no visibility to joined our IRC and said, Rocky's dead, uh, sorry, and then left. And we're all like, you know, is this for real? What, what just happened? And so it took us a little bit of time um, to find out that it was true. We found the news bulletins once they uh, once the the rest of the internet sunk synced up with the with you know the news bulletins of the local area, and we found out it was true, and um, which put things in a little bit of a weird a weird position. Now, when we decided to rebrand and release, we didn't have a name. We started with uh, Chaos El Enterprise Linux for lack of a better name, and I I asked the group and I said. I'm really interested in other name suggestions. And there was this guy that lives in the UK. And what he did was, he, he, he was the first person to mention CentOS. He came up with the name CentOS. And it's funny because I said, I love CentOS. I love the name. I hate CentOS. <laughs> I love CentOS, hate CentOS. And he goes, everybody said, why do you hate CentOS? And I said, because it's free and one cent, which is what it's implying, is an infinite <laughs> amount more money than free. And I said, I just, I don't like it. It's emphasizing the wrong thing. And I said, so, but I do like CentOS. I said, you could type it however you want, but I just like CentOS. And of course, what, what took off CentOS? But there was a lesson that I learned, a big lesson. I created a 501c3 class organization. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. It wasn't, we were in process of IRS 501c3. Um, we were in that process. It was incorporated as a not-for-profit in Delaware. We created the Chaos Foundation. 
Um, we were going it down this way. We had people volunteering to help us with the business side, help us with the legal side of creating this organization. So we had this big organization originally planned for Chaos Linux. Dentos came out of Chaos. I was leading the, the, the foundation. I had everything from how are we going to fund ourselves to a business model to all of this stuff drafted out, which as you can imagine for an engineer was quite the stretch. Yeah. Um, but I figured out, you know, I did a huge amount of reading and, and, and whatnot to figure out what needs to happen and how do we create a, um, how do we do this appropriately? We basically, you know, we, 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 we built this up when somebody came up with this name Centos <laughs> um, and he proposed it to me. I agreed to it and um, I mentioned in Slack in an email that this is the name we're going to and at which point somebody mentioned you should grab the domain name. The biggest mistake and the biggest lesson that I learned is you never accept a name to something you do not own the domain for. That guy grabbed the domain name and owned it personally. And that was an immediate warning to me, but I trusted him. And he said he was going to hand it over to the, to the foundation. You know, he just, he was just holding it just in case. But okay, fine. So we continued forth. Well, time started going on and getting it actually from him became more and more of a problem. Um, but at this point we've already released, we've already, you know, we, 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 we have huge amount of uptake. And then um, Rocky, um, left us. It put the project at this really weird kind of limbo state. And he mentioned, he said, you know, um, we don't have a, a, an actual, you know, project maintainer of it now. You're the lead, but we don't have a maintainer for it who can invest a lot of time in managing and running the day to day. Can I do this? And I said, um, sure. So he was kind of the, the, lead of the technology side and the actual development. I still led the project. Um, I still was designing the, the business model, the how are we going to sustain ourselves? How are we going to pay all of the developers and people that are contributing to the project? I had a plan on how to um, share the funds so people can actually even do this full time if they want. I mean, we, we had a, there was a great model in place. Um, he took over the tech lead side, and um, this just, it kept growing. Donations coming into the project. Um, first month was a few hundred bucks. Next month it was approaching a thousand. Um, and and over you know some time, we actually got to the point where it was you know thousands of dollars a month coming in, and it was it was it was hockey sticking. It was going up. Everything was going fantastic. We were getting you know huge amount of recognition was becoming very well known. I was doing a lot of outreach. I was working with a lot of support partners. Um, you know, here we are going 501c3 and we've got a whole bunch of people that are making money off of this, offering support, offering services. You know, the various cloud providers you can imagine are really interested in this. So this is how I was building up some of this revenue as well as, as, as a partnership. And, and being a 501c3, while we can't sell licenses, you know, we can definitely um, post are who has donated as yeah. supported partners and supported. Um, uh, so there was a little bit of a fuzzy line there, but I was I was told by legals we can get away with this. Um, so in a matter of speaking, people were basically you know giving donations in exchange for being a a partner of the of the project. Um, now you see it all over the place, but at the mm -hmm. time nobody else was doing this. The Linux Foundation does this constantly, as an example. So it was a very similar model to that. And um, at some point, so this is just imagine, this keeps growing, we're getting lots of recognition. Chaos Linux as a Linux distribution just falls in the shadow. It gets lost. Everything is now pretty much about CentOS. I, I very much enjoyed um, leading the project when I did. Um, and I do brag considerably uh, for when I go up and I give talks, I do say, you know, I. I was among the founding group and I led the project from inception to the point where it was a household name. And uh, from there, um, you know, the project moved on. And despite some hurdles that, that were thrown in the project's direction, it persevered due to the willingness and the commitment 
of a fantastic group of, of developers, of contributors, and I'm very proud to have been a part of that. So uh, that's one of my little calls to fame, and, uh, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I love it. I'm really happy with, with where the project has gotten now, and I'm very happy that Red Hat is leading the project and that you're involved and, and everybody else has been um, um, involved and it's gotten as big as it has. So I'm, I'm happy. 